Hello YouTube, this is me Ruben Nemo and this is my third video in my How to Follow Jesus um, Christ series and uh, today is going to be study 3, uh, God's Plan for Salvation part 2. I'm going to read the introduction. God na now offers salvation to us through our faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved through our faith in Jesus Christ, not through any religion or good works. To accept God's offer or salvation salvation we must do four things admit our sins openly and repent turn away from our sins uh, sins uh, believe that Jesus died for us and rose again receive the risen Christ by faith as our own personal Savior and publicly confess to him our, our Lord and speak and tell others that Jesus is Lord and here's what happens when we receive Jesus in our in this way he comes to live forever in our hearts he gives us eternal life he gives us the power to lead a life of righteousness, which is to live the right way, and gives us victory over sin. So we're not bound by sin anymore. Well, we do sin, but we're not like oppressed and we keep trying to do good works and then we keep failing and we think we can't do any more good things anymore. So, so part C of this, how we may receive salvation. Question 23. When should we seek salvation? Second Corinthians 6. And a sick, uh, Second Corinthians chapter six verse two and Proverbs chapter twenty seven verse one says, at a acceptable time. So when you feel like you need to do it, basically. Question twenty four says, can we see salvation by our own good works? Ephesians two, uh, verse eight and nine and t Titus chapter three verse five suggest no, you can't do that can't do that because God is holy no matter what good works you do because you still done sin and his standard is a hundred percent holy perfect you can't enter heaven by the amount of good works that you do question 25 is can we be saved by keeping the law Romans 3 verse 20 says no so we what it means by the law here is like like good works that you're meant to do so like the Ten Commandments and stuff we can't keep them completely because we're human and question 26 says if we desire God's mercy what two things must we do Proverbs 28 verse 13 says we must confess and forsake so that basically, basically means forsake any wrong things that we don't want to do anymore 27 if we confess our sins uh, what two things will God do for us First John chapter one verse nine. He will forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from any unrighteousness. So he'll cleanse us from any wrong things that we've done through Jesus' sacrifice. Question twenty eight. What is the means God uses to cleanse our hearts from all our sin? First John chapter one verse seven is the blood of Jesus. So basically that redeems us, so that brings us back as God's children. It justifies us, so it justifies us to be his children, because we are washed of his blood. Uh, uh, it forgives us, so it cleanses us of any wrong, it forgives us of any sins, and it, and it sanctifies us, so it sets us apart from any world trends that are wrong. Question 29. If we desire to be saved, what two things must we do? Romans 10, verse Mark verse 9 and 10 says with our hearts we must believe it we be must believe what we're praying and two we must confess so just say it basically question 30 if we come to Jesus will he reject us John chapter 6 verse 37 says no he will not reject us question 31 says if we open our hearts to receive Jesus what promise has he given to us Romans 3 I mean, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Come in and eat with you. So basically what he says there, well, it means he'll come into your heart and he'll have a relationship with you. And question 32, if we receive Jesus, what does he give to us? Uh, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, Our sins are forgiven. And question 33 says, What experience do we have as a result? So... John chapter 1 verse 13 and John chapter 3 verse 3 says the kingdom wait, let me check that
actually Yeah, so basically, the experience that we have is that you are born again, so you are born, uh, you, when you mean born again, your spirit is regenerated, it's not dead anymore, it becomes alive, it becomes a new creation. Uh, question 34 is, um, when we receive Jesus, what does God give us through him? Romans chapter 6 verse 23 is eternal life, so it gives us eternal life in heaven. Question 33, is it po possible... Is it possible for us to know we have eternal life? <clears throat> First John uh, chapter 5 verse 13 is then yes. Uh, question 36 is what record does God give us about Jesus? First John chapter 5 verse 11. God gave us eternal life in Jesus. So when you accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior then you get eternal life. 30, question 37. If we have received Jesus, the Son of God, what do we have? First John chapter 5, verse 12 and 13, eternal life. Uh, part D. Salvation gives power to overcome the world and the devil. Question 38. After we have re received Jesus, who lives in our hearts by faith? Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 is Jesus Christ. Now, faith is like the evidence of things that haven't seen so you don't have evidence that it's happened before or what's going to happen now but you have faith that it's happening even though you don't have physical evidence for it so that is faith faith basically so it's basically evidence of things not seen so you have evidence in your heart that is like and you you know it when you feel it that then you have jesus in you question 39 what can we do through this through the strength that Jesus gives to us and by Liam, Philippians 4.13 says all things so we can do all things through look back Christ who strengthens us question 40 is if we openly accept or confess Jesus before now what will he do for us Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 Jesus will confess in front of God so Jesus will confess directly in front of his father that he will um that that you belong to him Question 41, if we deny Jesus before men, what will he do? Matthew chapter 10 verse 33, Jesus will disown us before God. So never be, even if people uh, laugh at you because you know, people, because people laugh at you because you've accepted Jesus because they think it's crazy, don't uh, reject him because you know what you're experiencing is genuinely true. Um, Question 42. What kind of person is able to overcome the world and its temptations? 1 John chapter 1, First John chapter 5 verse 4 says, everyone born of God. So that's basically anyone who's accepted Jesus. And 1 John chapter 5 verse 5, people who believe Jesus is the Son of God. So that is anyone who accepts Jesus as the Lord and Savior and acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God their Lord and, and their personal Lord and Savior. Um, question 43. Why are God's children able to overcome the world? First John chapter 4 verse 4 suggests Jesus is greater than the one who is in the world. So Jesus is more powerful in every sort of way than the devil is. And question 44 says, By what two things do the people of God overcome the devil? Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, Is the blood of the Lamb, so that's the blood of Jesus, and the word of their testimony, so that's the word of how they've lived their daily Christian life with Jesus. So, because the blood of God covers, it washes away any sins, the devil has no claim over any Christian, anyone who genuinely believes in him, and the word of their testimony, you see, their daily walk with God. And question 45 says, Whom has God promised to receive in heaven as his child? Revelation 21 verse 7, He who overcomes. So basically, anyone who overcomes the devil through accepting Jesus as a Lord and Savior, live him to the best of their ability, uh, uh, as through their relationship with Jesus. Anyone who, anyone who um, has a genuine, genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, gets to go into heaven and shares their relationship with uh, with anyone else. And today's memory verses. Uh, 
uh, John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 but to those who believe in him and receive his name uh, his name and gave them the power to become children of God children of God so they they were not born of blood or will or flesh but or man but by that of God so they are born of God basically by accepting Jesus so if you want to if you've heard this and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and have a relationship with him and and have eternity with him in heaven because that's what he wants you to have he doesn't want to send you to hell because you've rejected him because he's going to respect your free will if you live your life separately from God now for the, for the rest of your life he's going to respect that and he'll say keep keep running away from me and that will be hell basically so if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior uh, pray this prayer after me dear God I come to you today I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and that he and that he rose again and that his blood blood washes me away of my sins Jesus I believe I'm a sinner Please forgive me of my sins. I turn away and send your Holy Spirit into my heart uh, to, so that I can have a relationship with you, Jesus, uh, through the Holy Spirit. And I acknowledge you as my personal Lord and Saviour. Please help me to have a relationship from here on in. In Jesus' name, Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, you're now a follower of Christ. Congratulations. So now what you need to do um, is get a Bible, like a commentary Bible, like New Spirit Life Filled Bible. It's very good at explaining verses um, so that you'll be able to understand and have a relationship with God more. Praise and worship Him. Uh, pray to God, which is talking to Him. Have a um, praise to Him, which is basically acknowledging Him for who He is. Go to a church. Uh, I'd say Baptist or Pentecostal church because they allow the Holy Spirit to move more and be more in control with the services. And then baptize, which is a public declaration that you've accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Saviour. Uh, so, any questions about Christianity or anything in general, say in the comments below and like and subscribe. Bye.